What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 170 of the Rise to Glory here with Gibraltar Apex and today we have the start of season 23. We're starting off with a Pepe Reyes Cup game against Gibraltar Lions. If you missed last episode go check it out as always it was a international special and yeah, yeah as with any new season I guess the thing to start with and the thing that everyone is always interested in is the transfers so let's get into them in terms of the transfers not a lot of business done really you can see we actually made a profit of 25 million pounds so not too bad at all in terms of the sales we actually had some pretty hefty ones some fairly big players leaving um but i think we've replaced them adequately we've not gone too crazy in the market very much trying to keep the core of our side the same Anyway, in terms of the team, a few players worth kind of noting who have left recently. Castano has gone to Manchester 62, of course, Camilo Castano, uh, the centre-back who plays for the Gibraltar national team. Francisco Salcedo has gone to College Europa. Not an entirely tran uh, surprising transfer. This guy needs first-team football. We have some emerging goalkeepers. It makes sense for him to go and play regular first-team football to benefit the national team. Another player who went is this guy, Afkir, who was a player who actually, when I signed... I got told he was going to be amazing from my scouts. I assume they lied because he was never very good for us. Uh, you'll notice that he has gone to Gibraltar Redempt. He's 8, 20 years old and uh, he will be eligible eventually, hopefully, to play for Gibraltar, assuming Morocco don't pick him up first. But a very good player, good pacey winger. Uh, was happy to get some money for him as well and he's the kind of player who's going to benefit from moving on. Anyway, a few kind of other players going out on the outs. Jason Mesa, a player who left us, a player who's kind of been forgotten about. He was in our kind of club for the last few years. As you can see, we signed him a few years ago now. He actually went on load to Calgary. Um, I can never say this team's name. Is it Cagliari? It doesn't matter. He's gone back to them. £4.5 million. They obviously were impressed with him on his loan. And uh, it was good to get some money for him. We also let Skeffington go to Valencia. Um, I wasn't 100% comfortable with this transfer, but he was kicking up a fuss about wanting to go. I really like Skeffington because he can play right and left back. However, in a weird twist of fate, I signed a player from Valencia for £250,000 more than I signed Skeffington from, called Gonzalez. And uh, if we just compare these two guys real quick... Uh, if I can find him, Skeffington, um, you can see that they're fairly evenly matched in a lot of ways. Gonzalo's not necessarily as physically gifted, but he's very good mentally. His physicals aren't bad either. He's a pretty rapid player. And, um, well, to get him in as a replacement for Skeffington kind of worked out well for all parties. Anyway, three more transfers, three big ones. The first one going out, Rildo, £15 million has gone to West Ham. It's a good fee for us to receive for our fourth choice strike. We have bought in replacements, of course, for him. We sold Sigurd Nerdson, a player who has gone to, well, as you can see here, College Europa for some decent money. Um, if you don't remember this guy, I don't blame you. Uh, he's been at the club a little while. He's had a few loan spells here and there. Last year, he actually spent the season on loan at Lance, uh, and he played fairly well there. Before that, he was at Elche, and, uh, well, we got a very, very good fee from a fellow Gibraltarian club. £16 million. Decided to let him go. I was very happy about that. And then the last player we sold was Diego Grana, a player who I signed last January for a measly fee, really, in hindsight, of uh, £6.5 million. He had a good kind of half a season with us, but with a lot of emerging centre-mid talent, and this guy being, well, on the cusp of turning 30, really, um, it made sense to move him on while we could and well to get well as you can see here 17.5 million pounds for a player who we signed for a fraction of that earlier on uh, the kind of in the season I was very very happy about that anyway they were the major transfers there's a few other deals here that might stand out a few loanies a few free transfers players being released but really just not a lot happening on the transfer front in terms of players coming in Familiar name, Carlos Andres Mora. He returns, 28 years old, Colombian. Uh, good player, can play up front as well. So he kind of semi-solves the Rildo leaving problem. But he is also a very useful centre mid. And because he's homegrown, I decided to bring him in. I talked to Punt about that at the end of season live comp for last season. And um, yeah, homegrown players, a lot of these guys. The next player, homegrown, the Mech. 24 years old, Algerian, a player who you might not recognise. He played in our reserve team for three years. He got homegrown status. We actually ended up losing him on a free to Malmo. He's rebuilt his career, had a good stint at Leipzig. Uh, he then went to Swansea in the Premier League. He actually scored a goal against us, I do believe, in the Champions League last year. And, uh, well, this year, he's going to be wearing our shirt, which is nice. He'll probably be a fourth or fifth choice striker. But at 24 years old, he's a good player. We have played, uh, sorry, we have paid a fair bit of money, but we've sold a lot of players as well. So it kind of works out for us. And the fact he's homegrown, the fact he's a very good striker, is uh, useful, certainly. Another player we brought in for his homegrown, state, uh, homegrown status was this guy, Henrik Invartsen. Uh, another Danish player, a bit like Nerdsen, who he sold. 
Uh, in Vartson here, you can see we bought him um, for 620, uh, 625k. We then released him last year where he went to Midgeland. And I've signed him again for £4.2 million. And so normally, obviously, this is the kind of business that you really can't afford to do in Football Manager. However, with the TV deal, with the club finances, it wasn't too painful. Anyway, the last player we brought in, a player who I brought in just as a bit of backup, really, in the centre-back position, it's this guy, uh, Jeroen Toll. He is Dutch. He's never played for the Holland national team. We signed him from Southampton. He was a very late deal in the window. We got him for £7 million, which is not a bad fee, I don't think. And uh, the reason we got him in was because actually at one point I was hoping Nertzen would be kind of our third or fourth or fifth choice centre-back, really. With him going out for, well, £16.5 million, I needed to get another replacement and we got in toll for a fraction of the price we sold Nerdsome for. So another good little bit of business. So in terms of our club balance, we sit at £165 million. Our transfer budget, £91 million. Wage budget, £300,000 spare. I have money to spend in January if I want to. Will I need to? I don't hope... Well, I hope not. I don't think so. But uh, regardless, you know, good financial position for the club to be in. Turning a nice profit. Uh, always good there. In terms of transfers, a little thing that I want to talk about real quick is the fact that teams in Gibraltar are starting to spend more money. Gibraltar Lions, kind of unsurprisingly, they spent £23 million. They didn't kind of go too crazy with their deals. Glasses United, newly promoted, spent £2 million, which is good to see them spending a fair bit of money. Signing players from like Atletico Madrid, Copenhagen, a nice variety of players there for a team who haven't really been attracting that many players. You can see here Lincoln Redham spent £9 million. Uh, lots of little transfers, really, from all over Europe, to be honest and uh, good to see them kind of strengthening the squad in all areas. Uh, Lynx FC spent £1.94 million, which is actually more than they have in the past. They're still worth multi-million uh, pounds, but they're still keeping fairly shrewd with their money. Another team spending the cash, Manchester 62, a team who have been doing that for a while. St. Joseph spent £1 million, which is good to see, signing uh, Elliot Long here from Fleetwood Town for £600,000, which I believe is perhaps their highest transfer ever. Cannon spent the littlest of the money, the few, the littlest, jeez, I can't talk, There's the least amount of money. They didn't spend a lot, newly promoted, of course. College Europa spent £41 million, of course, uh, Nerdson making a big bulk of that. They also signed and Valenta here from Manchester United, Czech Republic player, 21 years old. He's very good. £14 million, though, a big, big fee. The last team to spend money, an interesting one, Gibraltar Phoenix, newly promoted, I do believe, to the division. You can see here, they've been a bit of a yo-yo club. They've come back into the Primera division. Now, I don't know if it's off the rep boost they got for winning the Segunda division, but they've suddenly seemed to be able to attract players, and they've gone really, really crazy with their transfers. They actually spent £8 million on one player, and it was a player from West Bromwich Albion, and it was this guy, Daniele Piacenti, uh, or Piacenti, I He's Italian, he's very good. He's 19, a good little centre-back, um, 19 years old, a fair bit of money paid, probably not worth that much money if I'm honest, but it's good to see them being willing to splash the cash. So anyway, not a lot's really changed for us here, as I kind of alluded to right at the beginning of this episode. It's been a season where really, in the summer, we've just kind of strengthened where we needed to which is good to be able to say. I'm kind of putting faith in a lot of the younger players really stepping up. Glenn Andre had an absolutely fantastic kind of last season, really. You can see his development. He's been outstanding. 18 years old. Uh, really, naturally, a centre attack in mid. We're training him to play striker. He's going to be a class, class forward for us. Really like the look of Glenn Andre. And, uh, yeah, there's a, few, a fair few other players like that really emerging this year, obviously. Uh, Dominic Ella had a very good year last year, a player I hope to be in the first team kind of by the end of the season. Espinosa had a good season as well, still developing, of course, one of the younger players in the first team. And, uh, well, you can see here, Vinicius um, doing well as well, the 19-year-old. It's good to see so many different players developing through first-team football. And, really, um, it's a sign of kind of where the younger players are at, the fact I'm not kind of feeling a pressure to bring in new players Really, I'm just selling on players that aren't going to play for us for a nice little bit of cash. And then uh, with kind of what we have left, really, uh, I'm just kind of investing into youngsters, or as I have done kind of so far uh, this season, just not spending it at all because there really isn't kind of a pressure to do so. Anyway, in terms of our team for today's game, a few players ineligible. I believe they played a reserve game earlier in the day. They did indeed. Of course, this is the Pepe Reyes Cup. If you don't know, this is the Community Shield equivalent. In the Champions League, we have Cluj, Stuttgart and Benfica. 
it's a kind group, and I expect us to do well in it, if I'm honest. We'll probably be around for the Stuttgart game, or maybe even the Benfica game. We'll see how we get on early on um, in our first few games. Either way, let's get into today's game. Gibraltar Lions, they've signed a fair few players. They're going to be a tricky team for us, but we still really should be expecting to beat them. In terms of our team, it's pretty much full strength. We are missing a few players in the defence. Cabasele and Assad both suspended for this first game of the year. That's perhaps worth keeping an eye out on. Uh, but really, elsewhere in the team, it's... It's a strong team. It's a very good team, obviously. I, I'm Palmy wants to bring in Joe Bouchard, although to be honest, he's been kind of declining so rapidly. I mean, look at this. What happened? What happened over the summer? Did his legs drop off? Because that's what it looks like. If we, I, I looked at this earlier. This made me cry. Let's have a look at Bouchard's physicals because it doesn't, it doesn't paint a particularly pretty picture. If I'm honest, let me get rid of the ones which aren't aren't useful for us here. If we just look at his pace, yeah, I mean, it dropped by 0.8. <laughs> um, it's been a bit of a, a fall from grace, really, for Joe Bouchard over the last year or so. I think we're going to start him today, but he won't be playing much football for us. He's only 33, but his legs have just completely gone. Part of me really hopes that kind of his mentals kind of step up, I guess, because to be honest... He's quite a good technically gifted player, and he is only 33. If his mentals can improve and his technicals can go through the roof, he could still be useful for us. I mean, 17 passing, 17 vision. He's got Perlo written all over him. Anyway, we're going to give him the start today. Gonzalez, of course, one of our new players, a replacement for Skeffington from Valencia. Going to be starting today's game at left back. A bit of pressure on him. Gary Horse, the other player, really, who um, wouldn't necessarily be a starter to slot into the team. Uh, and, of course, if you didn't realise, we have not signed a new goalkeeper. Ludwig Young is still our first choice goalkeeper. But, of course, we've got Veronese uh, coming through and we've got Javi as well coming through. So, two exciting goalkeeper prospects and... Um, I don't know, I feel like this might be the last year for a few players who have been long-term members of the, the club to kind of be those starters for us. I feel like the likes of really Ludwig Young, Bouchard and Paul Smith, you know, 33 years old now, all three of them. Um, it, it's getting to that stage where players like Paul Smith and Bouchard, their legs are going to go, and particularly for Paul Smith out wide, it kind of is a little bit bleak. Either way, let's hopefully... Hopefully, I say, um, win the Champions League this year. <laughs> I want to win the Champions League uh, with Ludwig Young, Paul Smith and uh, Bouchard in the squad. If they, if they retire before we win one, it's just going to be really sad. I want them to be the players to lift the trophy aloft. You know, players who signed for us really, really in our first two seasons of going pro kind of many years ago now. It's 15 years, I think, since they signed, which is absolutely mental to think we're that far into this save at this point. Just players who have been around for so long. I mean, to put that into perspective, I think with FM, my longest ever save on my channel was maybe 13 years before this year. I think 13 years might be the record. I think the FC United Manchester save is the longest running save on my channel in terms of game date. That's been smashed this year by this save. But to think that some of the players who play for us have been at the club longer than my second longest save... It's a little bit mad. Either way, we need to be switched on here. Gibraltar Lions, a good team. We don't want to lose them. And Darlington probably should have scored. Looking at it, we've been on top in the game in terms of, well, the shots. But, well, Gibraltar Lions, they've had two half chances. They've had a clear cut chance. They should be doing more with it. We've had warning shots in our direction. Now it's time for us to return fire if we can. Junior doesn't quite get there. And, well, Gibraltar Lions, they've, they've got the ball again. They're going to spread it out wide. Gonzalez, of course, the new left back. Bit of pressure on him at number 35. Darlington, one of... Um, Gibraltar Lines is key players, definitely a player worth keeping an eye out on. Probably going to give him a bit of grief down that left-hand side. Although, I say that, Gonzalez, the, the new man, he crosses it in. How has that not gone in? Ball back into the mix, so it's going to be cleared away again. I thought we had a real chance there. It was. Apparently, it, it wasn't even a chance, actually, for us, which is a little bit bizarre. But the ball came whip it, whipped in, and somehow it just didn't end up in the back of the net, unfortunately, for us. That said, Mini Mosca winning it. Gerard heads it to Mr. Nobody. And uh, it's Gibraltar Lions with with the highlights again. It would seem they've got the ball again. Gonzalez, I I, t I mean I said he was going to have a tough game. Dudes, how have you got the ball there? I don't care. He's got to score that. Solo tips it onto the post. And well, at half time, unless we score in the last last minute, it's going to be nil nil. And that is a little bit concerning, if I'm honest. Obviously, I'm delighted to see Gibraltarian football getting more competitive, but I want to win the Pepe Reyes Cup. I'm far from please, boys. Please sort it out in the second half. Um, Girard's not having a great game. Paul Smith's having a really poor game. Mini Mosca's having a poor game as well. Gonzalez struggling for fitness. I'm going to have to take off Mini Mosca. I'm going to bring in Carlos Andres Mora. 
And I'm going to move Joe Bouchard. In fact, no. I'm going to keep Joe Bouchard at deep line playmaker. But um, no, we're going to welcome back Carlos Andres Mora. I'm going to give a, I'm going to give a round of applause because he's back. The Colombian, a player who's been at the club for a long time. If you've been watching this eight for a while, you'll know all about him. Scored some big goals for us. I think he scored some memorable goals. I feel like it was against Lazio, maybe. And we were we needed something like three goals in the last 30 minutes. And he, I don't know if he came on as a sub. But I feel like he got like a brace or maybe two assists and a goal and it, it was just a standout performance. He's back. Hopefully you can give one of those today because we kind of need it. Because there's 23 minutes left and it's nil-nil. And I don't really like that if I'm honest. It's not great. Anyway, Salas, of course, a Gibraltarian footballer we know from the national team, playing at left-back, involved in this build-up here, and actually it's the new player, the Czech Republic record signing, marauding in. A tackle comes flying in and Edda scores. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Panic. Everyone panic. We're 1-0 down. There's 12 minutes left. It's all gone horribly, horribly wrong. Paul Smith, please get off the pitch. Mosca, get on. Um, I mean, we need to try not to panic, but I am panicking. <laughs> right. We have done those changes. Do I want to make another... Uh, I don't know how I take off. I don't really want to take off Girard. I could take off Junior and bring in Tiago. Let's do that. Let's bring on Tiago. He's a good defensive midfielder. We have 12 minutes left to, well, <laughs> rescue this game. Or we are going to lose the Pepe Reyes Cup. Some of you will remember, not that many years ago, really. I think we lost... I can't remember if it was the Senior League, Senior League Cup... Or the Rock Cup. We lost one of those finals at the end of season. It was an end of season live cup double header, and we lost in a similar manner to this, really. Where I don't want to say we're getting FM'd, but we are probably getting FM. I mean, they've had clear cut chances. We haven't. I guess that's the difference. Hopefully, Mosca can make the difference for us. He'll probably grab two now. I believe in you, Mosca. I st I I'm worried. I'm wor right. Well, season twenty three. Might not be off to the best start here, if I'm honest. And um, it's all very awkward, isn't it? Well, hopefully this is a sign of things to come, is all I can really say. I want Gibraltarian football to be more competitive. I want the end of domestic dominance. And maybe, just maybe, this result marks the start of it. 1-0 it finishes. I'm not happy. We've won the Pepe Reyes Cup every single year we've been in it. And for the first time ever, we lose against Gibraltar Lions, our local rivals. And that's not going to go down very well with the fans. And if we look at the competition history, well, it's fair to say Gibraltar Lions, they've broken, they've broken the curse. How many years? 15 years in a row they've come runners up. Not this year, they win it. Fair play to them. They, they deserve to win probably, they created more chances. Hopefully we get a more competitive league now. <laughs> that's the that's the next dream. If we just look at the Primary Division history, it's worth noting actually that last season, um, in winning the Primary Division, we became the record kind of winners. But prior to us, you can see a Lincoln Red Imps, formerly known as Newcastle United FC, um, a very good team. They 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 held the record for the most times having won the top flight of Gibraltar. That is a record that we have now broken which I'm very very happy about you can see the league in Gibraltar has a very long and prestigious history Britannia the oldest kind of club still surviving you are a, a champion of Gibraltar and whilst this recent era has belonged to us it's hard to argue with the dominance Red Imps had before us but anyway interesting episode food for thought certainly maybe I will regret not bringing in more players I'm hoping that that is just a one-off game I mean Gibraltar Lions they've spent a fair bit of money but at the same time I still expect us to be doing a little bit better than that. Either way, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed today's episode. If you have, please do leave a like. It does greatly help me out. I really do appreciate it. Leave me a prediction for where you think we'll get on kind of this season. Walter Palermo is their key player. Well, that's bizarre. I didn't even realise he'd gone back to them. I feel betrayed. Four years at the Apex and he throws it away to return to... Right, we're ending it here. I'm not happy. He's, he stabbed me in the back. I feel betrayed. Palermo, what are you doing playing for the Lions? How did I not know about that? That makes me feel even sad. I don't, I'm not angry anymore. I'm just sad. Either way, guys, thank you for watching. As I already said, I'm going to be back next time. I don't know when next time's going to be. I think it'll probably be the Stuttgart game. Um, I guess you guys will have to stick around to find out. As always, if you have enjoyed the video, please do leave a like. And uh, other than that, it is me, Jack. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.